Hey, Mike Matthews here from Muscle for Life and Legion Athletics. And in this video podcast, we're going to talk water consumption. How much water should you be drinking every day and why? Okay, so let's start with why. Why is drinking water important? It is important because water is the single most abundant molecule in your entire body. About 60% of your entire body weight is water and just about every physiological process that goes on in your body requires water. For example, water is a vital part of your body's natural detoxification systems. Water is used to help digest food and then shuttle nutrients into cells. Water is needed to keep your ears, your nose, and your throat moist. Water is needed to keep our joint cartilage lubricated and supple, which is a big part of preserving joint health. And brain cells also require a delicate balance of water and other chemicals to function properly. And so then it's really no surprise that our body's water status affects many aspects of our mental and physical health and performance. Studies show that as we become dehydrated, so as our body's water levels get too low due to inadequate intake, it slows us down both mentally and physically. So our mental and physical performance declines. Our mood can become depressed, constipation is common. And if this becomes a chronic situation, if we are chronically dehydrated, there's evidence that this can actually increase our risk of heart disease, which is of course the number one killer in the world. And dehydration can be really tricky because it's very easy to ascribe those symptoms to other things. You could go crazy trying to figure out what's wrong when you don't realize that the only real issue is you're not drinking enough water. Okay, so how much water should you be drinking? Well, your body loses water every day through various things like breathing, sweating, urinating, pooping, and you have to replace what is being lost through drinking and eating. And yes, that's right, I said eating. Many people don't realize that food is actually a significant source of water for many people. One study showed that here in America, the average person got about 22% of their daily fluids, their daily water intake, about 22% of it came from the foods that they ate. And that makes sense when you realize that certain foods, like fruits and vegetables in particular, actually contain significant amounts of water. That said though, none of us are gonna be getting enough water through just our food alone, so we have to supplement that intake, so to speak, with water or really any beverage. Any beverage will count toward the water that your body needs, including caffeinated beverages as well, like coffee, for example. Some people say that caffeine is a strong diuretic, and so therefore, when you drink a, a cup of coffee, the caffeine that it contains negates the water that's providing, and that's nonsense. It's just not true. Yes, caffeine does have a slight diuretic effect, but it is very weak. It is not nearly as strong as some people would have you believe. So. Any caffeinated beverages that you are drinking, the water contained in those beverages does count toward your total intake. So what should your total intake be? Well, I like to go by the Institute of Medicine's recommendation, which boils down to about three quarters of a gallon to one gallon per day for adult men and women. And you should also keep in mind that if you sweat a lot in general, so let's say you exercise, you know, four to seven days a week and you are sweating a fair amount in your workouts, you probably are going to need to drink a bit more to replace the additional water that you are losing through the excessive sweating. And just to be specific with it, most people are going to sweat out about three quarters of a liter to two liters of water per hour of exercise, depending on how intense the exercise is depending on the climate. So if it's being done outside in July in Florida, there's gonna be a lot more sweating than outside in here in Virginia where I live in March, for example. And speaking of climate, you should also be keeping that in mind that if you are in a place like Florida in July, you know that within 30 seconds of going outside, you're already sweating. Whereas if you live in a place with more moderate climates, you may not sweat much at all throughout the day. So again, you have to be thinking with that. People that live in Florida, you know, for let's say six to seven, eight, nine months of the year, their water intake is going to need to be a bit higher than people in other areas of the country, people that live further north, for example, that don't sweat basically instantly <laughs> the second they step outside. So again, to boil all this down, if you just started with three quarters to one gallon of water per day, and then added on top of that, let's say a liter to a liter uh, and a half for each hour of exercise, you'll be good. 
So for me, for example, I drink about one and a half gallons of water per day. Sometimes it's a little bit higher, sometimes it's a little bit lower, but if you average it out, it would be about one and a half gallons per day. Now, in terms of how to actually do that, you have a few options. Of course, you can drink tap water, which is the easiest option, but I personally wouldn't do it because it seems like every few months or so, a new study comes out uh, highlighting the, the nasty stuff in a lot of tap water, ranging from bacteria to pharmaceutical drugs to heavy metals and various types of poisonous chemicals. And let's face it, tap water also kind of tastes like shit. So that's another problem, especially if you're drinking a lot of it, right? Uh, bottled water is an option, but it's an expensive option. It's gonna be very expensive if you're looking to drink, let's say a gallon of bottled water a day, would not do that. And research shows that bottled water can be full of chemicals as well. In one study, for example, um, they examined 18 different bottled waters from 13 different companies, and they found over 24,000 chemicals present in the water, including endocrine disrupting chemicals. Not good. And then you have water filtration, of course, which is my personal choice. Uh, we have a good reverse osmosis filter at the office and I also have it here at my house. And it's from a company, I guess it's purewatersystems.com. The name of the company is probably Pure Water Systems. Honestly, I haven't even looked. Got recommended to me by a friend um, who's super into just health in general. And he was impressed with this filter because it removes everything from the water. Uh, that water tests out at zero parts per million, zero PPM. It's very, very clean water, removes fluoride as well. Um, and if I remember correctly, the f I wanna say the, f the filter system itself was Kind of expensive, about $1,000 or so, but um, you know you have to change the filters once every six months and those are cheap. And we've had the same system now running at the office at least. That system has been running for years and it gets used a lot. We run through gallons every day and no problems. So I'm not getting paid to promote them, but good product, purewatersystems.com is what I personally use. Now, if that's too expensive, they may have a cheaper option, actually, one that just is like a countertop device. I'm not sure. You can check it out. But if, if they do, and if that's too expensive, then check out the Zero Water ZP010. That is a great, simple Brita-like filter that just does a better job than Brita. Okay, so a couple odds and ends here. Water and weight loss. Many people say that drinking water frequently or drinking a lot of water speeds up your metabolism because your body has to heat it up and expend energy and therefore that will help you lose weight faster and eh, not so much. A couple studies have shown slight increases in metabolic rate and at least one study showed no such increase. So that is, even, even if it were to have that effect in your body, the, the effect is gonna be so slight, it's not gonna matter. That said, Research shows that drinking water is an effective way to increase satiety with your meals, which means that you stay fuller for longer, and that of course makes it easier to stick to your diet. So in that way, drinking enough water actually can help you lose weight faster. Another point worth mentioning is I do not recommend drinking calories because it does not trigger fullness like food does, because it doesn't have the same volume. It doesn't keep your stomach full as long as food does. That's the primary reason. And so this is why you could drink a thousand calories of whatever and be hungry an hour or two later, whereas eating a thousand calories of filling food is going to keep you full for many hours. And lastly, what about water status and muscle building? Well, there is a relationship here. Staying hydrated is going to help you gain muscle faster and for two reasons. First, studies show that hydration status does affect weightlifting performance and it affects it actually quite significantly. Generally speaking, the more dehydrated you are, the less strength you're gonna have and the less muscle endurance you're gonna have, which of course makes for worse workouts, makes it harder to progress, and the harder it is to progress to heavier weights and have more volume, the harder it is to, to gain muscle, of course. And the second point here is a, an interesting little bit of physiology because studies show that cell hydration status relates to protein synthesis and protein breakdown rates. And what's happening here is that when a cell is dehydrated, it shrinks and that promotes protein breakdown. And on the flip side, a hydrated cell swells, it expands, and that promotes protein synthesis. It doesn't cause protein synthesis, but it is conducive to better protein synthesis. And as muscle growth is simply more protein synthesis than protein breakdown over time, the implications of this are clear. 
muscles that are well hydrated are simply going to perform better and grow faster than muscles that are not. Okay, so the bottom line here is if you're not currently getting enough water, you might be surprised at just how much you can benefit from drinking more. You might find that your mind is sharper and works better. You might find that your mood improves. You might find that your digestion improves. You're probably going to find that you do better in your workouts. You perform better in your workouts. You have more energy in your workouts. You don't get as tired easily in your workouts. You are able to gain strength and gain reps uh, faster in your workouts. And that of course, over time will result in faster muscle gain. And you may also find that when you are cutting, you find it easier to stick to your diet and therefore it helps you lose fat faster. So if you want to make it easy, get a filter and get something that you can pour the water into and carry around, like carry it to your desk at work, for example. I use a stainless steel container. It's, I want to say it's like a, probably like a one liter bottle and it's stainless steel. And the reason why I went with stainless steel, is because I just try to stay away from plastic uh, because many plastics have many, many different chemicals that I don't want to be putting into my body. I'm going to get exposed to them to one degree or another, but I'd like to reduce my exposure as much as possible. And these are particularly endocrine disrupting chemicals, which if you're curious about learning about that, I have an interview with uh, what's his, his name was Jay. It's Jay. So if you scroll down either on YouTube or in the, in the iTunes feed, you'll see uh, an interview I did a few months ago with a guy named Jay. I forget his last name. Um, very smart guy, scientist that has spent a lot of time studying endocrine disrupting chemicals in particular. And one of the easiest ways that we can reduce our exposure to these chemicals is just cutting as much plastic as we can out of our lives. And so again, that's why I use stainless steel and it's a one liter stainless steel container or bottle. And I just fill it up at the office. I have it at my desk and I drink, you know, let's say four or five throughout the day. In addition to eating uh, a few servings of fruits and vegetables and that's it. My water intake is set. All right. Well, that's it for the video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please do give it a like and drop a comment down below, letting me know what you thought and feel free to share your experiences with hydrating in general, any little tips or tricks that have worked well for you, let us know. And if you want to be notified when my next video goes live, and if you want to make me happy, then please click the red subscribe button down there. Uh, it's free. And if you click the little bell next to it, YouTube will send you a notification when my next video goes live. And lastly, if you like the information that I share, and if you like how I go about it, then you should definitely check out my books. I have a few books. One is called Bigger, Leaner, Stronger. I'll put a link up there. That book is for men in particular. I have another book called Thinner, Leaner, Stronger. Creative, I know. Link up there. That book is for women in particular. And I have a book called The Shredded chef which is a cookbook and it's a, a flexible dieting cookbook it's a cookbook of quote-unquote diet friendly foods that are also tasty and that you will look forward to stuff you can fit into meal plans and enjoy link up there <laughs> all right well that's it for this video thanks again for watching and i will see you next time